Welcome back to our channels, Warriors. We are still growing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, make sure you smash it right now. This story right here is going to be, do we as uh, correctional peace officers know and do we observe when an inmate is under the influence of whether, whether it's alcohol, uh, pruno, wine, or drugs, right? A controlled substance. Follow along, man. I'm going to give you a, a big example at the end. So, I'm just going to start from the beginning. When I started off at Sentinella State Prison in 2007 is when I touched down at the prison, I was in Charlie Gym. That gym housed Southsiders, Sureños, and Paisas because they had kept getting into it with other races and that's all that was left at, at the end. I was brand spanking new, right? Brand new jumpsuit, green, brand new lunch bag that I used to get from Walmart. Those things never lasted. Would have to continuously buy them every four months, right? So, as a new person, I'm just watching, observing. There's no way I'm going to take a lead on anything because I don't know anything, right? My partner did have some time under his belt, was a seasoned cop, right? Was a seasoned CO. So I'm just kind of following his lead. First time I encountered a drunk inmate was in that gym. It was a Southsider was drunk. And I know they have rules. The rules is you can't be out on the tier or you can't be out on the yard drunk. Well, this was a gym, so it's a dorm setting. Like, there is no cell. the bunk beds everywhere. They, my partner, he's instantly observes it right he like kind of looks and there was like probably like two of his homies south siders like holding him up the dude was drunk so do we observe it yes because like anybody who can tell a drunk person they're like they're like falling over their eyes are glazy like you can tell when somebody's drunk right look at all the chicks downtown that are all falling over in their big ass high heels right? You know when people are drunk. So they're holding this dude up, but they're looking, they're looking at my partner and they're saying, hey, we got this. We got him. We got him. So I'm, I'm like, <laughs> do, we jump, do we jump on him now? Do we hit the alarm? Do we put the handcuffs on? <laughs> Not just kidding. I wasn't that far out, but I'm like just watching, right? Like, well, fuck, my partner knows that they're drunk. These dudes are saying they got him. It's fucking homie that weekend at Bernie's and shit, right? They're holding him up and uh, they're walking him towards the shower. So, like, they said they got him, right? I'm assuming they're just going to go give him, like, a, a shower to, like, wake back up. Um, my, That's kind of what, it, what happened is, like, they said they got him. My partner wasn't tripping. That's the thing about, um, like, experience, right? Experience is like, hey, they see you, you see them, and we know what's going on, and it better get handled quick, or we will probably have to step in, right? The dude wasn't necessarily talking crap or being violent at that point, right? Uh, somebody under the influence and or drunk is a dangerous thing, right? But that every situation will play out different. They take them to the shower, so that was my introduction to that experience in prison. Not that I was, not that if I would have gaffled him up any other way, I mean, what are you going to, what are you going to do? Put, put cuffs on him and they're just kind of like, what are you going to do, right? If it was a housing unit and you have a drunk inmate, they need to be in their cell, Right? As in, if he's drunk in the cell and you know it, do not open that cell for anything. Just don't open it, right? That Then then you're going to create problems, right? That's going to create a problem. So safety, safety lesson right there. Um, another time I was on Delta Yard. This was when Delta Yard at Sentinella was still GP before it transferred over to SNY. A, another drunk individual... Man, this dude, you can tell because it was during yard, it was either inline 
or yard inline or yard re, uh, recall where they were coming back into the building and this dude he was coming in by himself but his homies were kind of like watching um and this dude was like like you know same shit staggering slurring and then my partner another seasoned partner right because i was new he's like hey man are you all right dude kind of mumbled went up to the cell he walked in through the rotunda made a left to a section went up the stairs he was somewhere up there by 202 203 cell 203 204 or four like up there so my partner was like let's go this partner was more of a crime fighter type but he had a sense of humor <laughs> I think he had a sense of humor, so he went up there, and he starts administering a, a field sobriety test up on the upper tier, like, the dude, like, gets a pen out, he gets, a like, a, a light, and he's, like, follow my finger, this dude is, like, going with it, I'm, I'm inside, I'm like, hey, they didn't teach us none of this, like, like, we're not CHP, we're not cops on the streets. Like, so, I, like, other inmates are looking, too. This dude's just going through the whole motion. He looks like he knows what he's doing. Fuck it. Let's do it. So, let's roll. So, we go back down. I'm like, hey, man, did you know what you were doing? He's like, nah. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> it was kind of funny because he just went along with it and, like, just gave him a field sobriety test for no reason. Right? But I guess you got to kind of make the time go by fast or, like, you know, make... Make the best of your experience in there. Uh, that was one experience, two experience. Now, and there was a couple more drunk individuals. Since the Super Bowl was yesterday, I'll tell you, when I was feeling a little chingon, got a little bit of a, an experience under my belt. This was Charlie Yard, level 4 GP, working the housing unit, okay? Um, Charlie three or something it was downtime in the building no inmates were out it was super bowl sunday i'm chilling i'm posted i'm like in the posted in the office or at the podium there's like a little office right there where the officers can hang out underneath the control booth so the dude in a section i want to say he was a native american i want to say the dude was like native american ish so in like cell over here in A section, probably like 112, 113, 114-ish. He kind of yells at me like, hey, can I get a crack? Like meaning, can I, can you open my door so I can hand my neighbor something, right? But that's what he said. I'm going to hand my neighbor something. Can I get a, a, a crack? And I'm like, I look around, there ain't nothing going on. I'm like, yeah, A, control with pop, sell, whatever. The dude opens it up, he goes to the neighbor, but then he takes off running to like another cell. Like one that he didn't say he was going to go to. So I'm like, that caught my attention like, man. So he goes back and that kind of, uh, that upset me, right? Because the way he did it, he, he, he did what he said what he was going to do, but then he took off running somewhere else and did something else. And I'm like, nah. So that brought attention to him. So I go to his cell. And I was a big old giant bag of Pruno, right? Inmate manufactured alcohol where they'll ferment fruit, oranges, apples, and mix it with like sugar packets. They'll leave it. It smells like liquor, but it also smells like kind of gross. But <laughs> no, for the record, I never tasted that. Never tried that. Nor did I was I interested. So there's a big old thing of Pruno. And then he had a tumbler. A tumbler like a big old cup of white lightning. That is more like inmate manufactured um, liquor. right? I don't know too much about it other than probably they say potatoes or rice. I'm not sure. But it's more potent. So I look at the tumbler. I look at the bag. I tell the dude pick one. So I think he ended up keeping the tumbler of the liquor. And I took the Pruno bag. But I left it there for him. Like I said the dude was in the cell. The dude who never really caused me any issues at all, right? And that kind of goes to say, like, if you carry yourself a certain way in there, even if you're, like, on the blue side, there really ain't no reason to be tripping on anybody. So, like, so be it. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Have at it. Have a ball, right? But that was that one. Can it lead to cell fights? Can it lead to in cell violence yes it can absolutely i'll just say i never even knew that that dude had that in there that's crazy <laughs> so 
<laughs> so, right, I mean, fuck what I know. There's a whole building full of enemies. I gotta go check on every one of them. So, let's fast forward to RJD, man. I, I think this is where everything went wrong. I think, I think RJD is where everything went wrong in my life. And I'm sure a lot of people can agree, like, s s Man, it was it was not it was the paranormal, the abnormal over there. Like, a somehow they were getting a hold of spice. Like, I don't even know what spice was, man. Bath salts. Let me tell you about bath salts. Bath salts and spice. Like these type of drugs should not even be in, consumed. First of all, <sighs> yeah, drugs are a pat are part of my past. Yes, they are one hundred percent. But if I ever seen anybody flipping out like the way I seen people flip out on uh, bath salts and spice, I would say, I don't want any of that. Get me away from that as far as possible. I don't want to be doing what this dude is doing, right? I'm talking about screaming around naked, just screaming, yelling, like mama, like just crazy wild stuff, like like if you're possessed by like a demon of some sort, like a demon clown, just ridiculous. But you're also violent, so it's very dangerous, <laughs> demon clown. You guys understand what I'm trying to tell you is like, I'm not going to say some drugs are better than others because all drugs are bad. But I don't know what, that, what was happening at RJD, man. So imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine me as a sergeant, brand new sergeant. And then getting stuck on that Charlie yard every once in a while, right? Bouncing around. And you have a level four EOP SNY on bath salts. You know, I never seen inmates jump the fence. Concertina fence. So you guys know what razor, you guys know what barbed wire is. Well, this is razor wire. Like it looks like little razor blades. Concertina, the ones in the rolls, right? You look at them in prisons. They have them in the military. We set them up. I never seen any inmate at all attempt to jump a fence, jump a fence, any fence jumping, right? Until I got to Donovan, man. These dudes were jumping fences like it was a cool thing to do. The unfortunate part about it is the razor wire was doing its job. These dudes were getting sliced up, diced up. There was one in particular that jumped the fence in Charlie Yard because level fours have fences in, within the yard, within the fences to separate. Dude jumps over one of them, gets all caught, cut up. Jumps over another one, gets all cut up. Like the dude is soaked. Looks like the movie Carrie. Blood, like just, the dude has lacerations everywhere, man. They're getting... They're getting trash bags in the triage treatment area, the TTA, and they're just putting trash bags on limbs because the dude is, is, is like leaking. Like how you don't die from that, I don't know. Dude goes to the hospital. Apparently, the word was that they had two surgeons stitching him up at the same time for like six hours, like going to work. That's how crazy and gnarly like RJD was. There was another one where the dude jumped the fence and was hanging out behind Alpha One, just kicking it. Why not? I don't. My recreation yard is not big enough. I need to go check out what's back here behind the building. Oh, man. So, this is these are all true stories, mind you. Absolute true stories. And you know, you would think Donovan, these two attempted escapes, right? Maybe you might just want to ship them out to another prison since they know the layout. Now they know what the back of the housing unit looks like. Nah, let's just keep them there. Why not? RJD. So, down to my last story. RJD. Inmates under the influence. Can we tell? This was towards the end of my, my career, right? 16-year career. This was, I was the tail end. I was a lieutenant. I was on Bravo Yard. Bravo Yard, the yards are long. Or even RJD, the, the yards are like, man, probably like two or three times the length of an average yard, like a Sentinel or Calipat layout or Ironwood. Like very, extremely long. There's a table, right? I already told you each race has their own table that they designate themselves, right? They separate themselves by race. 
I'm observing. I'm not going to tell you guys how I was observing, but I'm observing a table of inmates down at the far end by ADSEG. And there's a group of inmates, and I see them with jewelry, right? Bling. I already made a, a video about dirty cops, so, and one particular on that yard. So now we, we kind of know how that bling got in there, right? Big old Jesus pieces and whatnot. They have a cell phone. They're posted. They're taking pictures, like straight posted, right? Flexing. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh my God, right? So I'm just watching these dudes. Like, and this is Donovan, man. This is like the Wild Wild West. Like, who would ever possess anybody to do this? So they're taking pictures. So, right, then they break out the little joint, right? Start smoking weed. And I'm like, oh my God, right? Hector, don't do it. Hector, don't do it. Hector, like, man, is it worth it? This isn't even your yard, man. You're just passing through. Like, you know, these are all things going through my mind. Like, man. Because when you're on overtime or you're like on a cover, you don't want to ever go to some place and just change up the program or go crazy. But like, man. So then to top it off, I see them get their mugs and dip it into a big old bag of pruno that they had right there under a shirt i'm like oh that's enough that's it that's where i draw the line fellas there's a new sheriff in town let's go let's rally up the troops right so like i told you man i saw them with the chains and the cell phone i didn't really move didn't do much didn't do anything saw them with the weed I was like, oh my God, right? Still didn't do anything. I saw them get that mug of uh, a cup of Pruno and that was it. That was a wrap. There ain't no way in hell you're going to be smoking on the yard, drinking on the yard, taking pictures, acting like you're back in freaking back in the block. Ain't going to happen. I don't know where you think you are, or who you think you are. Not going to happen. Absolutely not going to happen, right? Not because I think I'm bad or because you need to maintain law and order. Trust me, you need to. In a, if not, it would be a wild, wild west, which that was a wild, wild west. And ain't no one man going to change it. Let me tell you that. So we gather up the troops, right? And I'm taking charge and leading from the front like a true leader does Sacramento. And we get there. Yeah, they started, you know, moving shit around, kind of. But they, we, we caught them. They got caught red-handed. I'm like, hey, give me this shit, right? Give me this. Give me that. Give me this. And I was like, man, hey, what are you guys doing? Like, and then they, they, you know, flip it. Oh, you guys are tripping. You guys, oh, we're, we're tripping. <sighs> man, I'm telling you, it was wild, right? So they said we were tripping. I said they were tripping. Everybody was tripping, right? RJD. Um, took all their stuff, took it all, right? I wasn't the type to write up dudes. I never wrote, I never wrote up a staff member and I never wrote up an inmate, right? Never did. I would just handle my business. So, I tell these guys, man, I tell them, look, if I was a, <laughs> this is what I tell them. If I was a criminal, and I had a tr and I was on the streets and I had a trunk full of AK-47s, dope, and money. The last thing I would do is be driving around the block with my music full blast, my tinted windows up, smoking weed out the window to attract the attention of the cops. And their response of was, man, we ain't criminals. <sighs> my God. Oh, wow. So with that being said, fellas and ladies, the message for today, right, was yes, we can tell when you guys are under the influence, right? Just don't push the limits. Don't. Stay in the cell. Don't bother nobody. Go to sleep. That's what my parents used to tell me when I used to come home drunk. Go to sleep. So, the lesson for today is, A, if you stay away from drugs and alcohol. B, man. There, you better do it responsibly if there is even a way to do it responsibly. And C, don't get upset when the cops do their job and do their thing. That You, you got caught. You got got. You got caught. Keep pushing forward.